Hare Krishna, <clears throat> dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, right here in the live studios in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel. Uh, we make a joke every night that Hive translated into Anglo-Saxon is Haven. So we're trying to create a safe haven for people to take shelter from the madness that's going on right now in the world. Uh, we have three esteemed uh, guests, um, Bhakti Sebastian, uh, Bhakti Eden, and Ananta Kripa from the uh, Sankirtan party in London. Uh, we welcome them with affection and uh, great respect. Uh, and we have, of course, the Prince of Hive has returned. <coughs> Radharaman Prabhu, who owns this flat, actually. But we, we tried to spruce it up a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram from Sri Krishna Lila Stava, verses 412 through 416 by Srila Sanatana Goswami, uh, meant to offer 108 obeisances to the pastimes of Krishna, especially the Vrindavan Lila. But it's also indirectly glorification of the Bhagavad Gita because Krishna spoke it and it's also a literary incarnation of Krishna. It goes like this. <clears throat> Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadya Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O Nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dvandodita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita, O life heir, of all the Supreme Lord's devotees. O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvadasava Sevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you, who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madekabando Matsangin Madguro Man Mahadana Manistadagamad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu tadayin atini chochatakada hanamun chagadachin mam prem narit kantayokspura O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we reached the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita 
as it is. Uh, we're starting from text 47. You know, in the last chapter, uh, Krishna revealed to Arjuna in a, in a more detailed way uh, who he is. Uh, the four seed verses of the Gita are there in the 10th chapter. And after those seed verses, Krishna uh, recipro reciprocated with Krishna by calling him Prama, uh, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Balan, the Supreme Brahman, the, the Supreme Abode, the Supreme Refuge the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So from this point on, Arjuna, he already knows most of his doubts are still uh, are, are, are removed. But still, for our benefit, he asked Krishna to show him physically how Krishna has entered into the universe, how he's maintaining it. And in the course of that revelation, Arjuna became struck with wonder, first of all, and offered the most beautiful prayers to Krishna, apologizing for being overly familiar with him as his friend. And But then he became overwhelmed with fear because this material universe is quite a, you know, fearful thing what to speak of, you could see the whole thing, past, present, and future, while sitting in one place. Well, that's what Arjuna could see by Krishna's grace. He gave him that vision. So then Arjuna said he was terrified. He says, enough is enough. I want to see you as you really are. So now we're, we're, we're starting with text 47 and Krishna is going to respond to that desire. Sri <clears throat> Bhagavan Uvacha Maya Prasain Nena Tevar Judaidam Rupam Param Darshidam Atma Jogat Tejo Mayam Vishwamananta Ajam Yan Maitwad Anyena Nadrishtapurvam The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjuna, happily have I shown you by my internal potency this supreme universal form within this material world. No one before you has ever seen this primal form, unlimited and full of glaring effulgence. Purport. Arjuna wanted to see the universal form of the Supreme Lord. So Lord Krishna, out of his causeless mercy upon his devotee, Arjuna, showed his universal form, full of effulgence and opulence. This form was glaring like the sun, and its many faces were rapidly changing. Krishna showed this form just to satisfy the desire of his friend, Arjuna. This form was manifested by Krishna through his internal potency, which is inconceivable by human speculation. No one had seen this universal form of the Lord before Arjuna, but because the form was shown to Arjuna, other devotees in the heavenly planets and in other planets in outer space could also see it. They had not seen it before, but because of Arjuna, they were also able to see it. In other words, all the disciplic de devotees of the Lord could see the universal form which was shown to Arjuna by the mercy of Krishna. Someone has commented that this form was shown to Duryodhana also when Krishna went to Duryodhana to negotiate for peace. Unfortunately, Duryodhana did not accept the peace offer. But at, the, but at that time, Krishna manifested some of his universal forms. But those forms are different 
from the, this one shown to Arjuna. It is clearly said that no one had ever seen this form before. Text 48 Naveda Jagya Janyanayar Nadhanayar Nachak Kriyabir Natapobir Ugrahi Evam Rupak Shakya Aham Miloke Drashtum Twade Anyena Kuru Prabhira O best of the Kuru warriors, no one before you has ever seen this universal form of mine, for neither by studying the Vedas, nor by performing sacrifices, nor by charity, nor by pious activities, nor by severe penances can I be seen in this form in the material world. Purport The divine vision <clears throat> in this connection should be clearly understood. Who can have divine vision? Divine means godly. Unless one attains the status of divinity as a demigod, he cannot have divine vision. And what is a demigod? It is stated in the Vedic scriptures that those who are devotees of Lord Vishnu are demigods. Vishnu Bhakta Smrito Daivaha. Those who are atheistic, that is, who do not believe in Vishnu or who recognize only, only the impersonal part of Krishna as the Supreme, cannot have the divine vision. It is not possible to decry Krishna and at the same time have the divine vision. One cannot have the divine vision without becoming divine. In other words, those who have divine vision can also see like Arjuna. The Bhagavad Gita gives the description of the universal form. Although this description was unknown to everyone before Arjuna, now one can have some idea of the Vishwarupa after this incident. Those who are actually divine can see the universal form of the Lord. But one cannot be divine without being a pure devotee of Krishna. The devotees, however, who are actually in the divine nature and who have divine vision are not very much interested in seeing the universal form of the Lord. As described in the previous verse, Arjuna decided, desired to see the four-handed form of Lord Krishna as Vishnu and he was actually afraid of the universal form. In this verse there are some significant words just like Veda Yajna Janaya Veda Yajna Janahi which refers to studying Vedic literature and the subject matter of sacrificial regulations. Veda refers to all kinds of Vedic literature such as the four Vedas Rig, Yajur, Sama and Atarva and the 18 Puranas the Upanishads and the Vedanta Sutra. One can study these at home or anywhere else. Similarly, there are sutras, Kalpa Sutras and Mimangsha Sutras for studying the method of sacrifice. Danaihi refers to charity which is offered to a suitable party such as those who are engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. The Brahmanas and the Vaishnavas Similarly, pious activities refers to the Agnihotra and the prescribed duties of the different castes and the voluntary acceptance of some bodily pains is called tapasya. So one can perform all these, can accept bodily penances, give charity, study the Vedas and so on. But unless he is a devotee like Arjuna, it is not possible to see that universal form. Those who are impersonalists 
are also imagining that they are seeing the universal form of the Lord. But from Bhagavad Gita, we understand that the impersonalists are not devotees. Therefore, they are unable to see the universal form of the Lord. There are many persons who create incarnations. They falsely claim an ordinary human to be an incarnation. But this is all foolishness. We should follow the principles of Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, there is no possibility of attaining perfect spiritual knowledge. Although Bhagavad Gita is considered the preliminary study of the science of God, still it is so perfect that it enables one to distinguish what is what. The followers of a pseudo-incarnation may say <clears throat> that they have also seen the transcendental incarnation of God, the universal form, but that is unacceptable because it is clearly stated here that unless one becomes a devotee of Krishna, one cannot see the universal form of God. So one, so one first of all has to become a pure devotee of Krishna. Then he can claim that he can show the universal form of what he is seeing. A devotee of Krishna cannot accept false incarnations or followers of false incarnations. Text 49 Ma te vieta ma chabimuda bhavo drishtva rupam godam idrin mamedam gapeta bi pritabanak punastvam tad eva me rupam idam prapashu prapasya. You have been perturbed and bewildered by seeing this horrible feature of mine. Now, let it be finished. My devotee, be free again from all disturbances. With a peaceful mind, you can now see the form you desire. Purport In the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was worried about killing Bhishma and Drona, his worshipful grandfather and master. But Krishna said that he need not be afraid of killing his grandfather. When the sons of Dhritarashtra tried to disrobe Draupadi in the assembly of the Kurus, Bhishma and Drona were silent, and for such negligence of duty they should be killed. Krishna showed his universal form to Arjuna just to show him that these people were already killed for their unlawful action. That scene was shown to Arjuna because devotees are always peaceful and they cannot perform such horrible actions. The purpose of, purpose, purpose of the revelation of the universal form was shown. Now Arjuna wanted to see the four-armed form and Krishna showed him. A devotee is not much interested in the universal form for it does not enable one to reciprocate loving feelings. Either a devotee wants to offer his respectful, worshipful feelings or he wants to see the two-handed Krishna form so that he can reciprocate in loving service with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 50 Sanjaya Ubacha <clears throat> It Yarjunam Vasudevas Tatokdva Swakam Rupam Darshayam Asabuyaha Ashwasayam asachabhitamenam bhutva punak saumyapapur mahatma <clears throat> Senjaya said <clears throat> to Dhritarashtra the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna having spoken thus to Arjuna, displayed his real forearm form and at last showed his two-arm form, thus encouraging the fearful Arjuna. 
purport. When Krishna appeared <coughs> as the son of Vasudeva in Devaki, he first of all appeared Well, that's a mistake. There's no long A in Vasudev. Make a note. Okay? When, when Krishna appeared <coughs> as the son of Vasudev in Devaki, he first of all appeared as four-armed Narayana. Does Vasudev have a long A in it, in that text? It doesn't. It's just in the, it's just in the Veda base thing. When Krishna appeared as the son of Vasudev and Devaki, he first of all appeared as four-armed Narayana. But when he was requested by his parents, he transformed himself into an ordinary child in appearance. Similarly, Krishna knew that Arjuna was not interested in seeing a four-handed form. But since Arjuna asked to see this four-handed form, Krishna also showed him this form again and then showed himself in his two-handed form. The word Saumya Vapu is very significant. Saumya Vapu is a very beautiful form. It is known as the most beautiful form. When he was present, everyone was attracted simply by Krishna's form. And because Krishna is the director of the universe, he just banished the fear of Arjuna, his devotee, and showed him again his beautiful form of Krishna. In the Brahma Sanghita 5.38, it is stated, Premanjana chudita bhakti bilo na. Only a person whose eyes are smeared with the ointment of love can see the beautiful form of Sri Krishna. Text 51 Arjuna Uvacha Drishtvedam Manusham Rupam Tavasamyam Janardana Idanim Asmi Sangrita Sachetak Prakritim Gataha When Arjuna saw, when Arjuna thus saw Krishna in his original form, he said, O Janardana, seeing this human-like form, so very beautiful, I am now composed in mind and I am restored to my original nature. Purport. Here the words Manusham Rupam clearly indicate the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be originally two-handed. Those who deride Krishna as if he were an ordinary person are shown here to be ignorant of his divine nature. If Krishna is like an ordinary human being, then how is it possible for him to show the universal form and again to show the four-handed Narayana form? So it is very clearly stated in Bhagavad Gita that one who thinks that Krishna is an ordinary person and who misguides the reader by claiming that it is the impersonal Brahman within Krishna speaking is doing the greatest injustice. Krishna has actually shown his universal form and his four-handed Vishnu form. So how can he be an ordinary human being? A pure devotee is not confused by misguiding commentaries on Bhagavad Gita because he knows what is what. The original verses of Bhagavad Gita are as clear as the sun. They do not require lamplight from foolish commentators. 52 Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Sudordasham Idang Rupam Drishtavan Asiyan Mama Deva ap yasya rupasya nityam darshana kang shinaha. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, this form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods 
are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form, which is so dear. Purport In the 48th verse of this chapter, Lord Krishna concluded, revealing his universal form, and informed Arjuna that this form is not possible to be seen by so many pious activities, sacrifices, and so on. Now hear the word Sudurdarshanam. Sudurdarsham is used, indicating that Krishna's two-handed form is still more confidential. One may be able to see the universal form of Krishna by adding a little tinge of devotional service to various activities like penances, Vedic study, and philosophical speculation. It may be possible, but without a tinge of bhakti, one cannot see. That has already been explained. Still, beyond that universal form, the form of Krishna with two hands is still more difficult to see, even for demigods like Brahma and Lord Shiva. They desire to see him, and we have evidence in the Srimad Bhagavatam that when he was supposed to be in the womb of his mother, Devaki, all the demigods from heaven came to see the marvel of Krishna. And they offered nice prayers to the Lord, although he was not at that time visible to them. They waited to see him. A foolish person may deride him, thinking him an ordinary person, and may offer respect not to him, but the, to the impersonal something within him. But these are all nonsensical postures. Krishna in his two-handed form, Krishna in his two-armed form, is actually desired to be, to be seen by demigods like Brahma and Shiva. In Bhagavad Gita 9.11, it is, it is also confirmed Abhajananti ma mudha manushim tanumashritam. He is not visible to the foolish persons who deride him. Krishna's body, as confirmed by Brahma Sangita and confirmed by Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, is completely spiritual and full of bliss and eternality. His body is never like a material body. But for some who make a study of Krishna by reading Bhagavad Gita or similar Vedic scriptures, Krishna is a problem. <laughs> for one using a material process, Krishna is considered to be a great historical personality and very learned philosopher. But he is an ordinary man. And even though he, he was so powerful, he had to accept the material body. Ultimately, they think that the Absolute Truth is impersonal. Therefore, they think that from his impersonal feature, he assumed a personal feature attached to material nature. This is a materialistic calculation of the Supreme Lord. Another calculation is speculative. Those who are in search of knowledge also speculate on Krishna and consider him to be less important than the universal fo form of the Supreme. Thus, some think that the universal form of Krishna, which was manifested to Arjuna, is more important than his personal form. According to them, the personal form of the Supreme is something imaginary. They believe that in the ultimate issue, the Absolute Truth is not a person. But the transcendental process is described in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, to hear about Krishna from authorities. That is the actual Vedic process. And those who are actually in the Vedic line hear about Krishna from authority. And by repeated hearing about him, Krishna becomes dear. As we have several times discussed, Krishna is covered by his yogamaya potency. He is not to be seen or revealed to anyone and everyone. 
Only by one to whom he reveals himself can he be seen. This is confirmed in Vedic literature. For one who is a surrendered soul, the absolute truth can actually be understood. The transcendentalist, by continuous Krishna consciousness and by devotional service to Krishna, can have his spiritual eyes opened and can see Krishna by revelation. Such a revelation is not possible even for the demigods. Therefore, it is difficult even for the demigods to understand Krishna. And the advanced demigods are always in hope of seeing Krishna in his two-handed form. The conclusion is that although to see the universal form of Krishna is very, very difficult and not possible for anyone and everyone, it is still more difficult to understand his personal form of Shamasundar. Text 53 Naham Vedayar Natapasa Na Dane Na Nachejaya Shakya Evam Bido Drashtum Drishtavan Asimam Yata The form you are seeing with your transcendental eyes cannot be understood simply by understanding by studying the Vedas, nor by undergoing serious penances, nor by charity, nor by worship. It is not by these means that one can see me as I am. Purport Krishna first appeared before his parents, Devaki and Vasudev. Again, is that Vasudev a long A? No. Krishna first appeared before his parents Devaki and Vasudev in a four-handed form and then he transformed himself into the two-handed form. This mystery is very difficult to understand for those who are atheists or those or who are devoid of devotional service. For scholars who have simply studied Vedic literature by way of grammatical knowledge, or by or mere academic qualifications, Krishna is not possible to understand. Nor is he to be understood by persons who officially go to the temple to offer worship. They make their visit, but they cannot understand Krishna as he is. Krishna can be understood only through the path of devotional service, as explained by Krishna himself in the next verse. Text 54 <clears throat> Bhaktya Tvananyaya Shakya Aham Evam Vidorjuna Gatum Trashtum Chatatpena Praveshtum Chapadantapa My dear Arjuna only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. Purport Krishna can be understood only by the process of undivided devotional service. He explicitly explains the, the explains this in this verse so that unauthorized commentators who try to understand Bhagavad Gita by the speculative process will know that they are simply wasting their time. No one can understand Krishna or how he came from parents in a four-handed form and once changed himself into a two-handed form. These things are very difficult to understand by study of the Vedas or by philosophical speculation. Therefore, it is clearly stated here that no one can see him or enter into understanding of these matters. Those who, however, are very experienced students of the Vedic literature can learn about him from the Vedic literature in so many ways. There are so many rules and regulations and if one at all wants to understand Krishna, 
He must follow the regulative principles described in the authoritative literature. One can perform penance in accordance with those principles. For example, to undergo serious penances, one may observe fasting on Janmastami, the day in which Krishna appeared, and on the two days of Ikadashi, the eleventh day after the new moon and the eleventh day after the full moon. As far as charity is concerned, it is plain that charity should be given to the devotees of Krishna who were engaged in his devotional service to spread the Krishna philosophy or Krishna consciousness throughout the world. Krishna consciousness is a benediction to humanity. Lord Chaitanya was appreciated by Rupa Goswami as the most munificent man of charity because love of Krishna, which is very difficult to achieve, was distributed freely by him. So if one gives some amount of his money to persons involved in distributing Krishna consciousness, book distribution, that charity given to spread Krishna consciousness is the greatest charity in the world. And if one worships as prescribed in the temple, in the temples in India, there is always some statue, usually of Vishnu or Krishna. That is a chance to progress by offering worship and respect to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For the beginners in devotional service to the Lord, temple worship is essential. And this is confirmed in the Vedic literature, Sri Tashvatara Upanishad 6.23 Yasya Devi Parab Bhaktir Yata Devi Tathagarao Dasyai Te Katita Yarta Prakashante Mahatmanaha One who has unflinching devotion for the Supreme Lord and is directed by the spiritual master in whom he has similar unflinching faith can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead by revelation. One cannot understand Krishna by mental speculation. For one who does not take personal training under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, it is impossible to even begin to understand Krishna. The word tu is specifically used here to indicate that no other process can be used, can be recommended, or can be successful in understanding Krishna. The personal forms of Krishna, the two-handed form and the four-handed, are described as sudurdarsham, very difficult to see. They are completely different from the temporary, universal form shown to Arjuna. The four-handed form of Narayana and the two-handed form of Krishna are eternal and transcendental, whereas the universal form exhibited to Arjuna is temporary. The words Twad Anyena Nadrishta Purvam, text 47, state that before Arjuna, no one had seen that universal form. Also, they suggest that amongst the devotees, there was no necessity of showing it. That form was exhibited by Krishna at the request of Arjuna so that in the future when one represents himself as an incarnation of God people can ask to see his universal form. <laughs> the word na used repeatedly in the previous verse indicates that one should not be very much proud of such credentials as an academic education in Vedic literature. One must take to the devotional service of Krishna. Only then can one attempt to write commentaries on Bhagavad Gita. Krishna changes from the universal form to the four-handed form of Narayana and then to his own natural form of two hands. This indicates that the four-handed forms and, and other forms mentioned in the Vedic literature are all emanations of the original two-handed Krishna. He is the origin of all emanations. 
Krishna is distinct even from these forms. What to speak of the impersonal conception? As far as the four-handed forms of Krishna are concerned, it is stated clearly that even the most identical four-handed form of Krishna, which is known as Mahavishnu, who is lying on the cosmic ocean and from whom and from whose breathing so many innumerable universes are passing out and entering, is also an expansion of the Supreme Lord. As stated in the Brahma Samhita 548, Vishnur Mahan Saihayasa Kala Vishesho Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. The Mahavishnu, unto whom, into whom all the innumerable universes enter and from whom they come forth again, simply by his breathing process, is a plenary expansion of Krishna. Therefore, I worship Govinda, Krishna cause of all causes. Therefore, one should conclusively worship the personal form of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead who, is, who has eternal bliss in knowledge. He is the source of all forms of Vishnu. He is the source of all forms of incarnation. And He is the original Supreme Personality as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. In the Vedic literature, Gopal Tapani Upanishad 1 1, the following statement appears Sachid Ananda Rupaya Krishna Yai Klishta Karine Namo Vedanta Vedyaya Gurave Buddhir Shakshine. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Krishna who has a transcendental form of bliss, eternity, and knowledge. I offer my respect to Him because understanding Him means understanding the Vedas, and He is therefore the Supreme Spiritual Master. Then it is said, Krishna Vai Paramam Daivatam. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Gopal Tapani Upanishad 1.3 Eko Vashi Sarvaga Krishna Eid Yaha Eko Pisan Bahuda Yo Vabhati That one Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and He is worshipable. Although He is one, He is manifested in unlimited forms and expanded incarnations. Gopal Tapani Upanishad 1.21 The Brahma Sangita 5.1 says Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam The Supreme Personality of Godhead is Krishna who has a body of eternity, knowledge and bliss. He has no beginning for He is the beginning of everything. He is the cause of all causes. In the Vishnu Purana 4.11.4 it is said, Yatra Vatirnam Krishnakyam Param Brahmanarakriti The Supreme Absolute Truth is a person. His name is Krishna and He sometimes descends to this earth. His name is Similarly, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we find a description of all kinds of incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in this list, the name of Krishna also appears. But then it is said that this Krishna is not an incarnation of God, but is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Ete Chanksha. Kalak Pungsa, Krishna's two, Bhagavan Swayam. Similarly, in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Matak Mat Paratadam Nanyat, there is nothing superior to my form, 
as the personality of Godhead, Krishna. He also says elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, Aham Adir Idevanam, I am the origin of all the demigods. And after understanding Bhagavad Gita from Krishna, Arjuna also confirms this in the following words, Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan. I now fully understand that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, and that you are the refuge of everything. Therefore, the universal form which Krishna showed to Arjuna is not the original form of God. The original is the Krishna form. The universal form, which is thousands and thousands of heads and hands, is manifest just to draw the attention of those who have no love for God. It is not God's original form. The universal form is not attractive for, your, for pure devotees who are in love with the Lord in different transcendental relationships. The Supreme Godhead exchanges transcendental love in His original form of Krishna. Therefore, to Arjuna, who was so intimately related with Krishna in friendship, this form of the universal manifestation was not pleasing. Rather, it was fearful. Arjuna, who was a constant companion of Krishna's, must have had transcendental eyes. He was not an ordinary man. Therefore, he was not captivated by the universal form. This form may seem wonderful to persons who are involved in elevating themselves by fruitive activities, but to persons who are engaged in devotional service, the two-handed form of Krishna is the most dear. And we only have one more verse to go, so we're going to plunge forward. Text 55. Mat karma krin mat paramo mat bhakta sangabar jitaha nirvayarak sarvabhuteshu yaksamam eti pandava. My dear Arjuna, he who engages in my pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of fruitive activities and mental speculation, he who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of his life and who is friendly to every living being, he certainly comes to me. Purport Anyone who wants to approach the supreme of all the personalities of Godhead on the Krishna Loka planet in the spiritual sky and be intimately connected with the supreme personality, Krishna, must take this formula, as stated by the Supreme Himself. Therefore, this verse is considered to be the essence of Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is a book directed to the conditioned souls who are engaged in the material world with the purpose of lording it over nature and who do not know the real of the real spiritual life. The Bhagavad Gita is meant to show how one can understand his spiritual existence and his eternal relationship with the Supreme Spiritual Personality and to teach one how to go back home, back to Godhead. Now here is the verse which clearly explains the process by which one can attain success in his spiritual activity devotional service. As far as work is concerned, one should transfer his energy entirely to Krishna conscious activities. As stated in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.2.255 Ana saktasya vishayan yatarham upayun jataha nirbandak krishna sambande yuktam vairagyam uchite no work should be done by any man 
except in relationship to Krishna. This is called Krishna karma. One may be engaged in various activities when one should not be attached to the result of his work. The result should be done only for him. For example, one may be engaged in business, but to transform that activity into Krishna consciousness, one has to do business for Krishna. If Krishna is the proprietor of the business, then Krishna should enjoy the profit of the business. If a businessman is in possession of thousands and thousands of dollars, and if he has to offer all this to Krishna, he can do it. This is work for Krishna. Instead of constructing a big building for his sense gratification, he can construct a nice temple for Krishna. And he can install the deity of Krishna and arrange for the deity's service as is outlined in the authorized books of devotional service. This is all Krishna karma. One should not be attached to the result of his work, but the result should be offered to Krishna, and one should accept as prasadam the remnants of offerings to Krishna. If one constructs a very big building for Krishna and installs the deity of Krishna, one is not prohibited from living there, but it is understood that the proprietor of the building is Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. It's called Krishna consciousness. If, however, one is not able to construct a temple for Krishna, one can engage himself in cleansing the temple of Krishna. That is also Krishna karma. One can cultivate a garden Anyone who has land, in India at least, any poor man has a certain amount of, amount of land, can utilize that for Krishna by growing flowers to offer him. One can sow tulsi, tulsi plants because tulsi leaves are very important and Krishna has re recommended this in Bhagavad Gita. Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Krishna desires that one offer him either a leaf or a flower or fruit or a little water. And by such an offering, he is satisfied. This leaf especially refers to the tulasi. So one can sow tulasi and pour water in the plant. Thus, even the poorest man can engage in the service of Krishna. These are some of the examples of how one can engage in working for Krishna. The word mat parama refers to one who considers the association of Krishna in his supreme abode to be the highest perfection of life. Such a person does not wish to be elevated to the higher planets such as the moon or sun or heavenly planets or even the highest planet of this universe, Brahmaloka, <clears throat> he has no attraction for that. He is only attracted to being transferred to the spiritual sky. And even in the spiritual sky, he is not satisfied with merging into the glowing Brahmajyoti effulgence. For he wants to enter the highest spiritual planet, namely Krishna Loka, Goloka Vrindavan. He has full knowledge of that planet and therefore he is not interested in any other. As indicated by the word Madbhakta, he fully engages in devotional service, specifically in the nine processes of devotional engagement, hearing, chanting, worshipping, remembering, worshipping, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering prayers, carrying out the orders of the Lord, making friends with him, and surrendering everything to him. One can engage in all nine devotional processes or eight or seven or at least in one and that will surely make one perfect. The term Sangha Varjita is very significant. One should disassociate himself 
from persons who are against Krishna. Not only are the atheistic persons against Krishna, but so also are those who are attracted to fruitive activities and mental speculation. Therefore, the pure form of devotional service is described in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1111 as follows. Anyabilashita shunyam jnana karma janavritam anukul yena krishnanu shilanam bhakti uttama. In this verse, Srila Rupa Goswami clearly states that if anyone wants to execute unalloyed devotional service, he must be freed from all kinds of material contamination. He must be freed from the association of persons who are addicted to fruitive activities and mental speculation. When freed from such unwanted association and from the contamination of material desires, one favorably cultivates knowledge of Krishna, that is called pure devotional service, anukul yasya, sankalpa, pratikul yasya, varjanam, Hari Bhakti Vilas, 11, 6, 76. One should think of Krishna and act for Krishna favorably, not unfavorably. Krishna was an enemy of Krishna's. From the very beginning of Krishna's birth, Kangsa planned in so many ways to kill him. And because he was always unsuccessful, he was always thinking of Krishna. Thus, while working, while eating, and while sleeping, he was always Krishna, con <laughs> Krishna conscious in every respect. But that Krishna consciousness was not favorable. And therefore, in spite of his always thinking of Krishna 24 hours a day, he was considered a demon. And Krishna at last killed him. Of course, Anyone who was killed by Krishna attained salvation immediately, but that is not the aim of the pure devotee. The pure devotee does not even want salvation. He does not want to be transferred even to the highest planet, Goloka Vrindavan. His only objective is to serve Krishna wherever he may be. A devotee of Krishna is friendly to everyone. Therefore, it is said here that he has no enemy near Vardaha, near Vairaha. How is this? A devotee situated in Krishna consciousness knows that only devotional service to Krishna can relieve a person from all the problems of life. He has personal experience of this and therefore he wants to introduce this system Krishna consciousness into human society. There are many examples in history of devotees of the Lord who risked their lives for spreading of God consciousness. The favorite example is Lord Jesus Christ. He was crucified by the non-devotees, but he sacrificed his life for spreading God consciousness. Of course, it would be superficial to understand that he was killed. Similarly, in India also, there are many examples such as Thakur Haridas and Prahlad Maharaj. Why such risk? Because they wanted to spread Krishna consciousness and it is difficult. A Krishna conscious person knows that, a man is, that if a man is suffering, it is due to his forgetfulness of his eternal relationship with Krishna. Therefore, the highest benefit that one can render to human society is relieving one's neighbor from all material problems. In such a way, a pure devotee is engaged in the service of the Lord. Now, we can imagine how merciful Krishna is to those engaged in his service risking everything for him. Therefore, it is certain that such persons must reach the supreme planet after leaving the body. In summary, the universal form of Krishna 
which is a temporary manifestation, and the form of time, which devours everything, and even the form of Vishnu, four-handed, have all been exhibited by Krishna. Thus Krishna is the origin of all these manifestations. It is not that Krishna is a manifestation of the original Vishwarupa or Vishnu. Krishna is the origin of all forms. There are hundreds and thousands of Vishnus, but for a devotee, no form of Krishna is, is important but the original form, two-handed, Shamasundar. In the Brahma Sangita it is stated that those who are attached to the Shamasundar form of Krishna in love and devotion can see him always within the heart and cannot see anything else. One should understand therefore that the purport of this eleventh chapter is that the form of Krishna is essential and supreme. What a purport. Last two purports. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the eleventh chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of the universal form. All glories to Sri Krishna, the source of everything including the universal form. All glories to Arjun, who received that vision of the universal form from Krishna and therefore was able to ask Krishna to please show me your form, two-handed form again. Hare Krishna. Okay. So we'll stop the reading tonight. And uh, if anyone has anything to reflect upon that they heard that particularly stood out, uh, please be our guest. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> You have something? Not yet. Huh? Not yet. Not yet. You wait. Okay. He's an opportunist. <laughs> Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Gopakanya Devi Dasi. She says, Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled devotees. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. <coughs> all glories to His Divine Grace. <coughs> from Bhaktamatsu Haribo Bhaktamatsu he says Hare Krishna Maharaj thank you for reading all glories to the daily readings of Sri the Prabhupada's books the very life and soul of the Krishna consciousness movement is he still in Denver or do you know no maybe not thank you Bhaktamatsu for that very encouraging word. And from Ananda Murti Devi Dasi. Hari Bol Ananda Murti, she's in Osaka. She says, Dear, Japan. Dear Guru Dev and all assembled devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for today's reading. Sri the Prabhupada is very mercifully explaining to us. How Krishna's two-handed Manusha Rupa is the original form of the Lord and cause of all causes. And in text 55, Krishna and Srila Prabhupada recommend to work for Krishna in devotional service. It is a very clear way for everyone what to do in life. Yes. Thank you so much. All confusion is taken away by the Bhagavad Gita as it is, and we should never ever minimize this book you know it's the ABC it's okay it's the beginning but it's all there and then it's elaborated upon in the Bhagavatam and then further in Chaitanya Charitamrita but this book is the basis 
if one can assimilate and reform his character according to the instructions in this book, he's fixed in devotional service. Then he can go forward more and more and more. If we try to go forward without having assimilated this book, not possible. Okay, thank you, Anandamurti. And from Daitari Haridas. Daitari Haridas from Wales. He says, Thank you again, Maharaj, for blessing me with these readings. Me and Ali are driving back from Sankirtan in Oxford today. Probably the best Tuesday ever on Sankirtan. Wow. Managed to distribute 55 Bhagavad Gita's. Wow. Listening to you read is the best way to finish the day. Hare Krishna. Thanks very much. And from Bhakta Rupa. Hari Bo Bhakta Rupa from Wales also. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sorry I've not been able to make the reading these past few days. Marathon madness. <laughs> well, Lord Chaitanya taught us if you want it if you want love for Krishna you've got to go you've got to be mad for him. And this the transcendental act, act of distributing Srila Prabhupada's books in public is the fastest path there. It's the fastest path because it, 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 it makes one so dear to Srila Prabhupada. Distributing these transcendental literatures um, to, in the mass, to the masses of people was Srila Prabhupada's plot of how to transform the earth. And we may think, oh yes, but we've distributed 55 million books. Where are all the devotees? Oh, they're there. They're out there. You know, and every one of those books has a name on it. And it, it may take a thousand years. It may. We don't know for sure. But one thing's for sure. Nobody's going to be able to understand God thoroughly without getting these books. No one will know what to do about all these problems that are plaguing human society right now, from the climate to the COVID, you know, to, to the blockage of the, you know, chain of, you know, what are the supply chains, to the political chaos being caused by maniacs, you know, getting the votes of other maniacs, smaller maniacs. And it's a very precarious situation. Prabhupada told us at one point that the time will come when millions of people will come to us for shelter. Because it will, it will be more and clearly and clearly it will be revealed you know, what the difference is and how Prabhupada's books are clearly have the solutions to the ills, social ills, personal ills, psychological ills. Anyone who connects uh, with this movement through the distribution of Prabhupada's literatures, they will get pra Prabhupada's mercy they will be able to see Krishna and love Krishna and feel what it means to be truly happy. Hare Krishna. You must have something by this time. Well, I, I had a thought that it, it um, Prabhupada doesn't elaborate on it the way that he does in some places, but I think he elaborates on it in another place. Wait a second. I could mention it, which is that in the last purport, he's uh, explaining how if someone's like a businessman, he can, um, and he's got surplus latch me, he can. Um, arrange for the deity service and um, building a temple for Krishna but then later in the purport when he 
when Prabhupada talks about uh, a devotee in Krishna consciousness knows that only devotional service to Krishna can relieve a person from all problems of life. He has personal experience of this and therefore he wants to introduce this system, Krishna consciousness, into human society and then he gives the example of the devotees that did that like Jesus Christ, Pallad Maharaj, yeah. Haridas Thakur. Yes. So it seems for a pure devotee that they actually focus on preaching. Absolutely. Krishna says in the Gita right at the end no one is m as dear to me as he and no one will ever be more dear to, he, to me as he as those who explain this Bhagavad Gita to others so that's why it's so ecstatic this activity because it pleases Krishna the most and Krishna is there in your heart and he's saying well done, well done keep it up, keep it up Material energy is very powerful, but Krishna consciousness is more powerful. Therefore, Krishna consciousness is the only method for overcoming the complexities of this material energy, which is always changing. All the forms are going, coming and going, coming and going. The soul is completely bewildered gets attached to somebody, gets attached to a family, gets attached to a country, gets attached to some identification, bodily, big per, big position in some company or whatever. And then invariably it's all taken away and they suffer like anything. And the more attached they become to those things, the more suffering there is in the end. But one who knows that every, everyone is the devotee of Krishna underneath and that Krishna is there in the heart of everyone they do the most they can do for everyone including country including family, including friends including whatever groups that they're identifying with and when we meet when people meet us if we are actually fixed in these spiritual principles and following the regulations they they know that they're meeting someone that's not ordinary. And in many cases, they want to know more. That's our duty. Find those people. Give them the books. Follow up. Teach them the books. Bring them to this movement. Build an army. A spiritual, transcendental army preachers Shri Bhagavad Gita as it is Ki Jai Samabhira Bhakta Brinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo Thanks very much See you tomorrow night Same place, same time, same topic The ever expanding transcendental nectarian instructions of Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita See you tomorrow. Haribo.